I told you you'd want more. I told him you were going to get more. Uh, we're in a super rush. Mommy's going to work. Daddy's going to work. Dylan's going to school. Right, Dill? No. Well, Mommy's going to school, too. And Dylan told her that she couldn't wear flip-flops because it's against school policy. And she couldn't bring a drink with her to school because it's against school policy. And for students. She's a rule breaker. <laughs> All right. Oh, you're strong. I got you. Ooh, fun hand. All right, episode 19. You ready? Oh, boys. You ready for this baseball game? I think so. We're facing the best team. Who are you facing? Mr. Fussy. Oh, you're playing Mr. Fussy tonight? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, Brady, Carson. Oh. Gissing, oh. We're stacked. Oh. But my team has me. That's right. You're on your team. So you guys should be good. I think, I think we might win. It's a fair match. And then we have Colin and Hector. And Who's going to pitch, do you think? Probably Henry, Dominic, Hector, and Colin. Uh, Not me, dude. Why? I don't know. Uh, I guess we'll see. <laughs> We're having a super quick dinner before our baseball game. You ready to play good, Dill? I'm telling you, I'm joking. Why? Seven, eight, nine. That's fantastic. I just finished uh, emailing Sue at the Finger Lakes Times. Um, she apparently wants to do the story on us, so hopefully she'll get in touch with us and uh, we'll be able to uh, get a Bergy Blender story in the newspaper, which would be super exciting for us, and hopefully help get us out to the masses and get us more subscribers, which would be sweet. On our way. I'm talking about squatty potty. Squatty Did you already pump? Yeah. That was quick. Yeah. You already paid? Yeah. Are you stealing gas? No, I had to She's about to card. steal gas. Oh, you paid with your card. Oh, I see. All right, you guys ready for baseball? Squatty. Landon is Googling up. squatty potties. Yes. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> It's time for the Landon Bergie really late at night. Joke, Joke of the day. Um, you can talk normal. Um. Did you forget the joke? Yeah. All right, he thinks he's got it now. Go ahead. What do you call an elephant that doesn't matter? I don't know. What do you call an elephant that doesn't matter? An irrelevant. <laughs> Lynn's team lost 16 to nothing. Yeah. Night night. Yeah, it's just like your team on the first day. Yeah, we didn't lose that bad. Yeah. Let me tell you about my day. Listen, first off, there's not a lot of vlog today. I've been so busy. I woke up. I went to work. Okay. I got out of work. Went directly to the Little League field. Coached my Little League pony team. Which, by the way, we lost. And I'll tell you, we lost 10 to nothing in our, in our very first game. We couldn't hit the ball. We couldn't field the ball. Today, after a little motivational words by myself and Amanda and our other assistant coach, we were able to put some hits together. We scored some runs. We lost by one point, 14 to 13. These kids played their hearts out. And it's so funny to me because Dylan, it's so cute. The last game we lost 10 to nothing and Dylan didn't care. Nobody on the team cared. They had a good time. They played baseball. They walked away. Today they lost by one run, and Dylan said, my heart was pounding. I thought we had a chance, Dad, and he broke down and he cried. Now a lot of people are like, ugh, why would you let your kid cry during baseball? Like, why? That's not proving anything. No. If a kid throws a bat or throws a glove or yells at somebody and then they cry because they're being a poor sport, that's not proving anything. That's true. But if a kid's away from all the other players on the team, and they're crying from the heart because they lost a game. That's beautiful. And I don't mean to sound over dramatic, but it really is a beautiful thing. When a kid learns what it's like to lose a close game, whether it's baseball, football, soccer, when they learn what it's like to play like a team and battle for each other, even at six, seven, eight years old, and then they lose and they feel that, that emotion. It's really a beautiful thing. We're a nation raised on sports. So when you finally, you get that chance to compete in a close game 
And whether you win or lose, you feel that emotion either way. It's a great feeling. I remember I remember when I coached my first year of ponies, which is the six, seven, and eight year olds. We had this great team and we started out four or five and oh or something. We were beating everybody, beating the pants off of everybody. And then our best player broke his arm and we were down our best player. And we didn't win as many games. We made it to the playoffs and we went pretty far into the playoffs. But we got eliminated from the playoffs in Little League. And there was this one kid on the team who who was just a poor sportsman all year long, always threw his bat, always was really frustrating to like coach. He constantly had to talk to him. And then the last game, he started crying when it was all over. After we walked through and we did that final hand slap with everybody, he, he started crying. And I walked up to him and I said, buddy, what's wrong? And I'm not going to lie when I tell you this kid was probably my least favorite player on the team. But he said, coach, we're never going to all be together on the same field again. And this, we're a family. And he, he was crying because he couldn't compete with those same kids and be on that same team again. And that raw emotion that's brought out in any kind of sporting environment is really a beautiful thing when done with the proper sportsmanship. So to see my child, and I've seen them all cry over sports now, but to see the last one, knowing that I'll never coach another one in ponies again after I'm done with Dylan, to see him have that breakdown because, you know, they fell a little bit short and he felt that pain, but understood that losing is a part of life, to see him cry and be upset about it, but to know he can come back another day tomorrow and play another game and try again, there's nothing better than that. Like, that's a great feeling for me as a parent. It probably wasn't super great for Dylan, but he'll look back on it years from now. I still look back on my Little League moments. So to have those Little League moments is a great thing. Everybody hit. Good job, Dylan. You got some good hits, bud. It's super late. I'm super tired. Amanda's already over there. Over there. She's in bed. Super exhausted. It's been a super long, busy day. Tomorrow will be much of the same. I have to mow the lawn tomorrow, so... Yeah, Amanda's working, and I'm home alone again. I'm by myself. So right, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna mow the lawn. Have a good day. It's gonna be fine. Till tomorrow, blender blades. Hit the puree button. And keep on blending. Thank you. Cam drop.